Now basically we're talking about the emptiness in this teaching. So that emptiness the definition of the emptiness I think we have no choice to use another word but uh, sometimes the word is, does not matter so much uh, depends on the how to understanding and how uh, explanation of course, when generally people, those who not, never heard emptiness, a word, and then make the sometimes a little bit hard for them to understand. The basically what this means, emptiness, in so far my understanding in Buddhism, it simply means <coughs> means and doesn't mean empty of cup empty of house doesn't mean is nothing is there. No. The emptiness simply means means interdependent nature. We must understanding when we understanding of the emptiness we must understand interdependent nature. So therefore Nagarjuna said Nagarjuna is known as after, actually, as the second Buddha. After Buddha, after Buddha, after six years, six hundred years, I believe Nagarjuna came, appears in this particular in the Nalanda University. So, Nagarjuna said, Tenjin Tenjo Mato Pechunga Yoba Maino. Nagarjuna says, everything is outer, inner phenomena, everything is interdependent nature. There is nothing you cannot find which is not interdependent nature. <coughs> so therefore, therefore, you cannot find. Everything says nature is empty. So therefore, Mother Nagarjuna is very detailed. I mean, very clear his own teaching, Buddha's teaching, explanation. The so that emptiness and that interdependent, it pervades to the each of us. <coughs> Outer phenomena, inner things, whatever we see, whatever we experience, physically, emotionally, everything. Very interconnected each other. <coughs> so, so outer in interdependent and outer emptiness, all this environment completely depend on itself, their own energy of the fire, wind, water, earth, so like same thing is as when we grow as outer phenomena, the trees, flowers, there is, we cannot find one substance itself without the depending on something else. You cannot find When you research, when you think carefully, outer, everything depends on each other. 
flowers it comes from where from the earth there is no earth there's no water there's no moistures it cannot be happens so it's pretty much very clear whatever we see is depend on the emptiness so therefore it emptiness why is emptiness depend on so many things comes to together you cannot find in the depend in the got a particular something solid nature so therefore when we particularly uh, outer emptiness is which we can see which we can experience uh, much more difficulty for in our practitioners the, our own when you look our own bodies of course it's very clear it depends water depends all this food depends all these energies bodies particularly depend on those things so one cannot solid cannot survive but some few days it could be possible which I remember <laughs> my mom says when they escape from Tibet they have a week after two three weeks don't have any food even don't have the water but they survive they could be possible a few days few weeks but let you longer cannot survive only cannot survive only the water so therefore this particularly physically matter is it depend on based on emptiness we cannot find depend on so many things that like same things emptiness does <laughs> This emotional things are sent. But it depends on some power there, right? Some particular things power. Sometimes when emotional things when rises, sometimes attachment is stronger, sometimes anger is stronger, sometimes jealousy is emotion part, sometimes things like a little bit one is higher, one is lower, it happens that. A little bit up and down. But when you look carefully as a meditators, then looking carefully oneself, really it depends many things, that involves many things, emotional things. So therefore, the, the negative part, that's therefore the same thing's positive part in our life, happiness. It's the same thing. <laughs> same thing of happiness part of the body, the physically happiness, aqua. Not just one. No. Generally, whole body is healthy. Even some part, one part of the body is unequal and unbalanced or un energy is there. It makes whole entire body is shut down. It's very clear. But generally, whole general body is okay. But at the same time, so that is really how it affects the how connected each other in the depending emptiness. So therefore, happiness of the physically, <laughs> happiness of the emotion, of course, again, is not just one cause and the condition. There has to be cause, condition, many things there. Uh, of course, we generally depend on our own happiness and our own welfare is depend on us. Of course, there's some level, but some level is depend on others very much. Very much depend. Particularly these days, I we all realize, you know, even we live in a one country which is peaceful and happy country. 
but that depends on other country. Right? It's very clear. They make trouble, which is kind of making some things pass up, you know. So this is how related we are, you know, how connected we are. We all are connected to each other, our love, our compassions, our helping. So therefore we are learning as a Buddhist teaching how to live as together, how to help each other. So this, you, know, you look at emotionally, this is completely interdependent nature. Positive side and the negative side. So that's called the really interdependent. That is called the, the emptiness. So is the point of interconnection the place of emptiness? Yes. Where they meet, it's an empty. No, it's just. You're not just meeting, it just comes together, it's, it's, it's there, it's connected already, you know. So, so then the another way of emptiness could be through understanding, to a lot of study, it's possible. But that is, is called the emptiness sometimes. It's called the logically understood and the philosophically understood of the emptiness or the end of the bed. The best understanding emptiness, all the end of the pending, is true understanding through the practices. Particularly emptiness is, as I said, pervades to everyone. So therefore, this emptiness is, the interdependent nature is not separation of the compassion. <laughs> so now you can see where it fits, now compassion. Compassion, it fits within in the emptiness, within in interdependent nature. <laughs> So, compassion has a different level. Relative compassion, the particularly ultimate compassion, is direct connected with interdependent, all the emptiness. So, most important, the practicing loving kind compassion there, then suddenly rises completely understanding the emptiness nature, how empty it is. So that is emptiness is not nihilism, they're not empty of cup or empty of house. That emptiness is something there which is you cannot describe, which is beyond the world. Emptiness is like a cup or bottle or something's emptiness that is not yet understood the emptiness. If you understood the emptiness and compassion and the interdependent, the when you rise is within ourself, completely some genuinely loving kind and compassion rises in our within ourselves, emptiness is there, understood now. <coughs> So therefore, so it's very important, so which is, now where it fits, bodhicitta. Of course, the bodhicitta fits into the emptiness again. Bodhicitta fits into the interdependent nature. That which is the relative bodhicitta is the relative compassion, kindness. And the ultimate bodhicitta, the true nature of mind, or the true nature of the Rigpa awareness, is the true understanding of the emptiness.
So it's not separable there. So it's very important rather than uh, something else practice. The practicing always kindness, compassion, really sincerely. It could be, I, I think there has to be talks, there has to be learned so many uh, practical matters to how to meditations. So we don't have time that. So, so it's good to learn and good to meditate. Well, sometimes people are searching emptiness somewhere in there, you know, uh, not much affected. The emptiness, real understanding, particularly as a practitioner, sincerely practitioner, when something comes up in a happiness within oneself, the joy, when you look that happiness, where it is? Oh, of course, it's no question about comes from self, comes from others, comes from our own individuals, karma, positive karma. It is comes from the uh, the uh, karmas of the uh, collective karma. Of course, it's collective karma there. Individual karma and the collective karma. So individual karma, positive karma, of course, rises within oneself happy sometimes. Sometimes the collective karma is not there, so everyone is within a family, friend has to be suffering. So that is collective karma is not there. So today we are here, so fortunate, we have a collective karma. Of course it depends on the conscious condition, so many things. Right? We don't know how we met, we met something somewhere. Due to different conditions, you know. <coughs> then when we think about how we created this, uh, uh, our pilgrimage, Due to our collective karma, particularly we have a collective karma, we're meeting together, practice together, this is so positive karma. So that is interdependent. That is also emptiness. That is when you reach, when you search and realize the complete the way it is, we cannot find it. It's there. So therefore, it's very important to practicing first relative bodhicittas are so important. Relative bodhicitta, relative loving kindness and compassion. At the same time, practicing the ultimate loving kindness and ultimate bodhicitta cannot separate. So then we are becoming really understood completely with this teaching. There's no uh, uh, misunderstanding. Sometimes we lot of teachings, sometimes uh, teachings of the different masters, not enough sometimes, clear what is the relatives he is or she is talking about relative level. Sometimes he is or her talking about the ultimate levels. They sometimes mix together everything. You know, so then it's misunderstood there sometimes. So we have to same time better educated relative levels and ultimate levels. But once the practitioners completely really enough, then there's no separate. But same time we cannot in, I think, ignore the relative bodhicittas. Relative bodhicitta what? Relative compassion, relative emptiness, and the relative interdependent is the very day life we live is the relative. So we have to live as positive. 
So we cannot say oh, we don't want that, but it's there. So practicing as my own understanding becomes so far relative bodhicitta that leads to the into the understanding the ultimate bodhicitta and ultimate the true understanding of the interdependent the compassion the emptiness so it's very important which is Agnagarjuna made against the the statement emptiness is always see as anything when we see tree or when we see people it just everything's come together you know in just one condition of course there is one special stronger relation stronger the that movement is there it's possible but they go to deeper uh, understanding and through meditation uh, particularly practice uh, it's very important uh, so So that is, I think, my understanding always when emptiness says that means everything's interdependent. So then, now, not much to say, yes. The conclusion is now that. The very simple way of saying the emptiness is practicing same times loving kind compassion relative levels and the same times when there does not work relative levels then there's not much attached there just let go you know just let go there it's very important and even like you know relative level of happiness it comes to some rises, happy, joy in the life. We just enjoy and just rejoice that. Not try to not so much attach there. Not to hold. Generally, meditator as a meditator point of view, is not to hold. Actually, holding is one of the the hardest part. Actually, even the hardest part, meditators to recognize how we hold. You know, it's very difficult. Holding, grasping. You know. And this meditation part, one of the practice part is we're really letting go. It's very hard to learn until you it depends the practitioners actually. Some are very good with that, you know. Letting go how to meditation during meditation times and every time. It's a little bit a challenge when even my own experience <laughs> sometimes I realize, sometimes sometimes still hold, you know, until you realize after hours go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back. <laughs> I have to find <laughs> where you are. So, so I think so. It's just uh, all this. Uh, nothing wrong. It's progress in the meditation practices. <laughs>